Module 3, Lesson 2, Student Page 9, Lesson 2, Recursive Formulas for Sequences. Consider a cumulative sequence <clears throat> 5, 8, 11, 14, 17. If you believed in patterns, what might you say is the next number in the sequence? Hopefully you see that we're adding 3 each time and that your good guess, your best guess, was 20. Write a formula for a keyless sequence. Well, we know that our sequence starts at 5. And what happens is we add 3 for each step. So we say n minus 1 to tell us how many times to add 3 once we get past the initial step. And then this would be our a sub n. Explain how each part of the formula relates to the sequence. Well, a sub n is any term. Five is the first term. Three is what gets added. And n minus one is how many times? To add. Explain Johnny's formula. Well, it would have been nice had they written what Johnny's formula was. I'm going to put it here for you now. So this is Johnny's formula. You'll notice it's a little different than the ones we've seen before because we're saying the value of n plus 1 equals the value of n, the term before the next one, plus 3. This would generate a keyless sequence, and let's take a look and see how that would work. If we wanted to say that Let's let n equal 1. What we find out is that a sub 1 plus 1 equals a sub n, a sub 1, because we're putting 1 in for n, plus 3. Or a sub 2 equals a sub 1 plus 3. Now we have a problem because we still kind of have things, something that looks like two variables. But we also have a rescue. What we have is we have a sub 1 is 5. So what we're going to find out is a sub 2 is equal to 5 plus 3, which is 8. And that is indeed a keyless second term. Let's look at one more. Let's look at a sub... Let's look at... A, let's let n equal 2. So now we're going to say 2 plus 1, because now 2 is going in, equals the function for 2, the value, plus 3. Well, here we go again. We have a sub 3 equals a sub 2 plus 3. And fortunately, we know that a sub 2 is equal to 8. So we can say a sub 3 is equal to 8 plus 3. So a sub 3 is equal to, excuse me, the third term, the value of the third term is 11. Got it. We have a kilo in a plane. And if we change the plus sign in your formula to a minus sign, or a time sign, or a division sign, and what we're going to do is examine what would happen. I'm not going to make it equal to 1. That means we can say a sub 1 plus 1 equals a of 1 minus 3. i got to start saying these right. Looks like we're going to put a 5 in here. 5 minus 3 is 2. So our a function at 2 is 2. Let's let n equal 2. That's going to generate for us a of 2 plus 1 equals a of 2 minus 3. Fortunately, we know that a of 2 is 2. 2 minus 3 is going to give us 
the third value in the sequence, which is negative 1. So now it looks like what we're doing instead of adding 3 is we're subtracting 3. We're going down. Now, where this takes us, plus 1, which is a function 2, gives us an a1 value is 5 times 3, and we get 15. The third value in our row in our series is going to be based on a sub 2, which is 15 times 3. And this one is going to equal 45. And our a sub four, a our fourth value in the series sequence of a is going to be 45 times 3. It is going to be 135. Got pretty big pretty fast. Final scenario. What will the positions in the next position up from A1 be? Well, it's going to be the 5, the RA sub, our A1 position divided by 3, which is going to give us 5 thirds. The next position up from 2, the, A, the third position, will be A2, which is 5 thirds divided by 3, which is just like saying times 1 third. So 5 thirds times 1 third, 5 ninths. It needs to keep getting smaller. This was an A2. And finally, the, the term in the fourth part of the sequence, 4, is going to be base 5 ninths. be divided by 3 again. So we're going to go with 5 ninths times 1 over 3. We're going to get a nice mess down here, 5 over 27, but there's the answer. Yay!